Hi everyone, today I'm talking about INFJ guilt about giftedness. Giftedness or being gifted, I tend to think of it as sort of like the hidden topic for INFJs. It's the elephant in the room, it's always there, and it's actually a big deal in our lives. It affects our lives very deeply, it influences everything we do, it really plays a key part in our relationships and in the way we are in the world, our jobs, our careers, but it's something we never talk about and it's something that's not often acknowledged. Most INFJs and INFPs that I talk to when I say, you know you're gifted, right? You know a lot of um, maybe the difficulties or the struggles you're having in school or in work or with friendships, a lot of it comes back to being gifted. Almost always the first reaction I get is, oh, no I'm not, you know, that couldn't possibly be true. I didn't excel in school, I didn't do well in math class, I've, I've never been good with facts or logic. Um, a lot of people will also say, this is really common for INF personality types in particular, they'll say, well, I believe everyone is gifted, right? Like we all have our own unique gifts and I, I don't want to feel that I am superior to other people or I'm setting myself above other people. So being gifted is not really about that. It's not really being about being superior to other people. I think it sometimes gets pushed as that in our society because our society tends to really divide everything up into levels. There's inferior and there's superior and there's hierarchies and some people are up here and some people are down here and you should always be striving to get up there. I think that's all just a certain way of looking at things first of all but but basically an illusion. I don't think there are all of these levels and some people are better than other people and I don't think it's very helpful when you talk about being gifted or you think about being gifted and what that means in your life, for you to feel like it's a label where someone's saying, you're really smart or you're above other people, you're, you have superior intelligence. I find that's a really limited way of looking at it and it's a really unhelpful way too because it actually tends to make us feel more badly about ourselves and shy away from learning about being gifted and what that means. So being gifted means that you think in a different way and you think in a more expansive way. Um, you don't tend to just go linear A, B, C, D. You don't just see the obvious, you tend to see things that are not obvious. You are able to take a lot of different information from a lot of different areas and sort of integrate and synthesize it all together and pull out new insights and new uh, creative nuggets from all of those different areas, right? So being gifted doesn't mean just one thing, but it basically means that you are different and that you have different needs and that you're going to need to be mentally challenged, sometimes even emotionally challenged in a different way than most of the rest of the population. So once we can really own the fact that, yes, I am gifted, and I just wanna to say too, you can definitely be gifted and not have done well in school. That does not mean that you were an A plus student or you were valedictorian or even that you tested into your school's gifted program. In fact, a lot of times gifted people don't do well in school. They find school very boring. They don't like all the rules. The rigid structure doesn't work for them. So you might have had a terrible time in school and still be a gifted person. A lot of people who are gifted are also neurodivergent. So their learning style, the way they process information, it's not the norm, right? It's not the mainstream. And if you went to school in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, anytime in that time period, maybe even the 2000s, that wasn't really acknowledged. It's only today that people are really starting to open up to, hey, a lot of people have different kinds of brains and there's a lot of different learning styles out there. And just because someone doesn't do well in the traditional model of school, it doesn't mean that you know, they have low intelligence or they can't do it, like they're unable to do it. It might just mean that that traditional model doesn't work for them. So what happens with INFJs and INFPs is that most of us are gifted. I would even, I, I would honestly go out on a limb and say every INFJ and INFP I've ever met, which is a lot of people, has been gifted. We're all gifted in different ways, but I do believe that we are all gifted. And I think that being gifted is something that comes along with that trait of neurodivergence. But what happens from an early age is we see a lot of the time that other people are threatened by our gifts. Now, it is also the case with INFJs and INFPs, we tend to be kind of lopsided in our gifts. So a lot of INFJs and INFPs will tell me, 
I'm really, really good at information, right? Like I'm good at reading a lot of books. I'm good at taking in a lot of information. I'm really great at research. I can absorb a lot of information. I can remember a lot of stuff. Um, I can put it all together. I'm really good at writing. I'm really good at reading. I'm not so good with the physical stuff, right? Like I'm not very athletic. Uh, I have trouble with hand-eye coordination, like catching a ball, a simple, simple act of catching a ball is hard for me. I'm one of these people, right? Or um, I'm really, really good in the arts. I'm really good with music. I'm really good with art. I'm really good with um, literature, stories, but I'm not really good at math. Numbers are confusing to me or numbers are really hard for me. Any sort of concrete objects are really hard for me. I'm not really good at spatial stuff. So we tend to be really lopsided in our gifts. And a lot of the time we will focus on the areas in which we're lacking because so many INFJ and INFP personality types suffer from self-deprecation, we will really tend to zero in on what we're not good at. And we really focus on that. And a lot of the things that we're not good at are very popular in society, right? So like I said, athletics or math or logic or facts, right? Those types of areas that are very, um, rewarded in mainstream society. If you're good at those things, you will be very much rewarded. We're not good at that. So we tend to focus on that and say, oh, like, I'm just kind of bad at everything, or I must be stupid, or something's wrong with me. I'm defective. I hear that from a lot of INFJs and INFPs too. You know, I grew up thinking I was defective or I was stupid because I couldn't do simple homework assignments, or I really had troubles on on trouble on tests because the answers seem so limited. You know, like, with a multiple choice test, they gave me three options, and I'm thinking so much more deeply about it that I just don't see how I could pick any of those three options in good faith, right, without looking at all the different facets of the situation. So that's quite a common problem for INFJs and INFPs who grew up gifted, is that sometimes we didn't do well in school, and we also have these areas of lack that we tend to focus on and internalize with this sense of shame of like, oh, I guess I'm not really good at anything. The fact is, though, we have some areas that we are very, very good at, and usually those areas are the ones I name, the creative arts, right? So like art, painting, making things, building things with our hands that are colorful and original, stories. We're usually very good storytellers, whether that's verbally, in role-playing games, or writing, you know, writing stories, writing novels, putting together stories. Um, we're very good at listening. We're very good at counseling people. We're very good at compassion, right? We're very good at being the advocate for other people. We're very good at, like I said, really absorbing large amounts of information and making these hidden connections that other people can't make. <clears throat> so what happens is a lot of times when one of those types of gifts comes out in front of other people, other people will be threatened by it. And they might make um, kind of a snide comment. Like I always used to get in the schools or workplaces, sometimes I would let it slip that I had read this many books this month, you know. I would always usually try to be careful or people would see me reading a lot. They'd see me reading on my lunch hour and they'd say, boy, you read a lot. Like how many books have you read this month? And I wouldn't even think about it. I'd be like, oh, I don't know, like 30 or 40. And then they would give me this look like, you've read 30 or 40 books this month. What's wrong with you? You know, and then I was like, oh, I've said too much and I need to backpedal. But a lot of times when things like that slip out, how um, fast we can read or how fast we can write or how much time we can devote to writing or reading or um, our artistic talent might come out, right? Somebody sees something and they're threatened by it. A lot of the time too, it's a narcissistic parent who's threatened by it. And that's our first experience of someone being threatened by our gifts, someone being really not okay with our giftedness. And then they give us this reaction like, well, what's wrong with you? Or, um, or I've even got like, you're lying. Some one person, uh, many years ago, I was working in an office and I was talking about how many books I had read that year. And I think it was like 100 or 120 or something. And the person said, oh, I th you must be lying. No one could do that. And I felt really offended because I wasn't trying to show off. I mean, we were talking about books and how many we had read that year. And I was directly asked, well, how many books do you think you've read this year? So I just gave the answer. And then for someone to say, oh, I think you're lying really took me aback. And then I could see that person was threatened. Like they thought I was showing off. I wasn't trying to show off. I just really legitimately am a voracious reader, right? So that will happen to us a lot of the time too, where <clears throat> we're answering a straightforward question, a straightforward question, or we're showing somebody something we've made. 
And they're actually threatened by our giftedness. They're threatened by our ability to have made such a thing or done such a thing or put something together, usually very quietly because INFJs and INFPs tend to work behind the scenes very quietly, so no one's really expecting us to come out with this thing. And then they get threatened, and we see that reaction. And because we're so intuitive, it really hurts us. We don't want to threaten other people. We don't enjoy the feeling of other people being envious of us. Some people do enjoy that feeling. INFJ and INFP personality types really don't. It makes us uncomfortable when we become aware that someone else is envious of us. Because we're so able to put ourselves in another person's shoes, immediately we will put ourselves in their shoes and say, well, how would I feel if I was experiencing that deep feeling of envy? Oh, that feels really painful. That feels really uncomfortable. I, I would feel inadequate. And then we realize that person feels envious because they feel inadequate. I don't want to make anyone else feel inadequate. So that feels horrible to us. Like that feeling of other people are so jealous of us or they want what we have. That doesn't feel good to us. It makes us feel really uncomfortable because we feel like it must be so painful for the other person. So what happens after this when we have displayed our giftedness or it's leaked out of us, right? Or someone's asked us a question and it's been revealed that we are gifted in a certain area. And then we get this reaction where they don't believe us um, or they don't like it. We can tell they're envious. Or in the case of a narcissistic parent, maybe we somehow then see that now we've entered into a competition with them when we really didn't even understand a competition was going on because that's how narcissistic parents are. And that feels horrible too. So we get some of these reactions and then we say, oh, this isn't good. This doesn't feel good. Someone saw my giftedness or I showed my giftedness in some way and I got this reaction from others. I don't like this. So then we pull back. We pull back and we retreat and we make it our safety mechanism to play small, to keep harmony. And that's something a lot of INFJ and INFP personality types have adopted. And we use this throughout our lifetime, this playing small always to keep the harmony. So we downplay our achievements. We downplay our abilities. And I will say, I know INFJ and INFP personality types, I truly do believe it does not matter what gender you are. There's a struggle across the board but especially women are even encouraged to do this in the home, in society at large, to play small, to downplay their gifts. Don't try to get too much attention. Don't draw too much attention to yourself. That's dangerous. It's show-offy. It's not good. So that's really ingrained in women from a young age. And again, if you grew up in those decades, you know, the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you definitely got a double dose of that, of like, you need to play small. That's your role here. If you're a woman and you're gifted, definitely don't tell people about it. That's something to hide. That's something that sets you apart and not in a good way. So definitely keep playing small. So we do that throughout our life. We are always playing small. We're holding back. We're holding back on our full intensity and we're holding back on going full force with our gifts because the thought of going full force with our giftedness Feel scary. I mean, we already got these disapproving reactions when we just revealed the littlest bit, right? Like our parent tried to compete with us. The people we work with gave us funny looks. Um, in our friend group, we could tell someone was jealous. It didn't feel good, right? We've already gotten these like not good feeling reactions from other people. So inside we're like, well, if I went full force, I'm just gonna get more of that. And I don't want more of that. However, when you are gifted and you hold back on your gifts, it starts eating you alive. It starts eating you from the inside out. It does not feel good at all. And you end up feeling very frustrated and you can end up in a really bad place of depression and anxiety actually because it feels hopeless. You are not letting your, you're not letting the potential of your full self actualize, right? You're holding yourself back from self-actualization which is why you're here. That's why, really, that's why all of us are here, but especially INFJs and INFPs. This is essential to our health, that we are always striving towards self-actualization. So when we're doing this thing where we're like holding the horse back at the gate and we're like, no, 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 you can't go out there. Like, you can't run that fast. I can't let you, that's dangerous. We're not letting ourselves strive for self-actualization. We're holding ourselves back. That's detrimental to our health. So instead of holding ourselves back, and trying to keep that harmony by playing small. What we really need to do 
is move into a big life transition where we're moving away from the people who are threatened by our gifts. And that's hard. It might mean you have limited contact with that narcissistic parent. It might mean you find a different friend group or you stop working at that job. Um, or you decide you don't care what your coworkers think and you just stop interacting with them as much. But you have to make some decisions around it where these people, these friends or this group of people or whatever it is, they're threatened by my gifts and that's their problem. It's not anything I need to help them out with. I'm not responsible for their reactions, right? That's something they have to sort out within themselves. I need to focus on me and I need to focus on self-actualizing here and now through my gifts, through the gifts that have been given to me as a person, through the things that come really naturally to me, really easily to me. And that's the last thing I'll say. I really hear this from so many INFJs and INFPs where they say, I'll say, you know, you're really gifted with painting or you're really gifted with poetry um, or you're really gifted with music. And they say, oh, I can't possibly be gifted in that area. It's just so easy for me, which is funny because that is why I think you're gifted in that area, because it's so easy for you. If something's really easy for you, that means you have natural gifts in that area. Now, that doesn't mean that if something's not easy for you or you don't naturally come to it, you can't improve, because I definitely think you can as well. There's, I think, honestly, 90% of success is practice, right? Whether that's writing a novel or playing the piano or swimming or whatever it is, it's practice. It's doing something over and over again and really committing yourself to it. However, if something is easy for you, if writing feels easy to you, or painting feels easy to you, or dancing feels easy to you, that is a huge indicator that your energy flows naturally in that direction anyway. You are naturally gifted in that area, and you'll know it because it will feel easy to you. Thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in today. I know this is a really big topic. Um, I could go on for probably another hour about it at least. I do urge you to check out a great book. If this is like really resonating with you and you're like, oh, wow, I think maybe I'm gifted. There's a great book called The Gifted Adult by Mary Elaine Jacobson, I think. It's a wonderful book and it really talks about all the traits of highly creative people and gifted people and what that looks like in behavior and in lifestyle and in life choices. It helped me immensely. It's the gifted adult, Mary Elaine Jacobson. Thank you so much again for watching today. Please sign up for my newsletter as well. I send out so much stuff to my newsletter list all the time. Resources, recommendations, notifications of new classes coming up. I teach quite a few of those. So please make sure you're on my newsletter list. The link is in the comments below. I will see all of you next time.